Hey guys, welcome back to the AJ Analysis channel where today things are pretty darn simple. We are talking about how Pep Guardiola has made this Manchester City side one of the best teams that the planet has ever seen. And of course now a treble winning team. We're going to talk about some of the problems that they faced early in the season, how Guardiola addressed them and turned them, like I said, into one of the best teams in the world. They're absolutely unstoppable at the moment. I don't know if we've ever seen a team quite as complete as what Manchester City are right now. And Pep Guardiola has really evolved his tactical philosophy this season. And he's had to, because early on in the season, things weren't going too great. Now, don't get me wrong, Manchester City were never in a crisis. It was never that bad. It's just that the standard at City these days is so, so high. And early on in the season, they weren't hitting those standards. They weren't quite clicking on the pitch in terms of an attacking point of view. And defensively, they were also a little bit frail as well. Guardiola had to change something. First of all, though, let's look at what the problems were. So it's quite simple really. The big problem was that Erling Haaland was signed to the club and that sounds like a crazy thing to say. But over the past few seasons Manchester City have played with someone like a Phil Foden, a Raheem Sterling up front, players like that, even Bernardo Silva at times. Players which are used to naturally dropping into midfield and creating overloads. That is something City had done brilliantly for years. Haaland when he first joined uh, this season wasn't really up to doing that. He wasn't up to playing that role. So when Manchester City were uh, moving to their normal shape which looked something like this earlier on in the season. When they were moving to this shape, they weren't able to create the same midfield overloads which they normally do. So when the opposition were willing to kind of defend with narrow wingers like this, City didn't find themselves creating overloads in the middle, because whereas in the past they had a player dropping into this area, creating the overload, they now didn't have that, because Haaland was higher up. This restricted City's ability to overload the midfield, and as a result they were losing possession of the ball a bit more. And the other problem they had was that when they lost the ball, their counter press wasn't that good, but also their rest defense shape wasn't very good, and it led to dangerous transitions. There's a few reasons for this. Now, one of the reasons for this was because they only had one holding midfielder in Rodri. With Bernardo Silva and De Bruyne both pushing much higher up the pitch, Rodri was left to kind of hold down the midfield himself. Then the other problem as well was that Cancelo defensively wasn't very good in the early stages of the season, and... You know, that's been a problem which he's always had, but early on this season it was really highlighted, which meant that teams were getting at Manchester City. They were bypassing this kind of three in the midfield here and getting wide of the centre-backs and hurting City. City had problems both in and out of possession. On the ball, they couldn't quite get used to having Haaland in the team. He was scoring a lot of goals still at the time, but the play wasn't right. The attack wasn't quite clicking in the same way, and then defensively they had problems. So Pep Guardiola had to evolve, and I mean, as the treble suggests, he did exactly that. So, in the second half of the season, Pep Guardiola evolved his side to look something a little bit like this. We can see a few changes. John Stones has come into the team. Now, I mean, in terms of the defence, there's been a bit of inconsistency. At times, it's been a Kanji at left-back. At times, it's been Ake. But the big difference was John Stones coming into the team, in place of Cancelo. Defensively, that is a massive upgrade, because you've got an extra centre-back on the pitch, but also you've now got a better defender in the wide area in either Ake or a Kanji. We've now got Gundogan in midfield, bringing a bit more control now, to be fair, this was a change which we saw quite early in the season. And also you've got Bernardo Silva on the right wing. The really important player here though is John Stones, thanks to his tactical versatility and his technical ability. At last, John Stones is getting the credit he deserves. For me, he's been a world-class defender since 2018. He's just had a lot of misfortune really with injuries. He's finally getting recognised as one of the best defenders in the world. And for me, he is in the top three English centre-backs of all time. I really think he is that good. And he has proved it in the run-in in the second half of the season. Without John Stones, I don't think Manchester City would have won this treble. And it comes because of his ability to step into midfield. Whether that be from a right-back position like we saw at one stage of the season, or later on in the season from centre-back, stepping into the midfield, allowing City to move to a back three. Like this, we then saw Rodri and Stones playing as a double pivot, allowing De Bruyne and Gundogan to push further forward. The whole idea behind this shape for Pep Guardiola is to dominate every single phase of play. That has been the plan for the whole season, but now in the second half of the season, or maybe even the last third of the season, he really achieved it. This shape has allowed him to control every single zone of the pitch. And it starts at the back. With Edison's ball playing ability, Manchester City have been able to play with width from the back. So when they're getting pressed, they are able to stretch the pitch and play out from the back. As a result, most teams haven't really bothered putting them under too much pressure just because they're too good. So that's City kind of winning that first phase already. They can play the ball out from the back, with Edison kind of being used as an outfielder. Therefore, though, the opposition drop off and Manchester City are able to move the ball forward. Where, as we've said already, they have this back three. Now, the benefit of this back three is that it allows them to outnumber pretty much any pressing structure which the opposition come with. 
whether it's a front one or a front two, we can see that Manchester City have the extra man. Even when teams go for a 4-2-3-1 like this, they still have five players in these deeper areas up against the four. So this base of five players has allowed City to outnumber pretty much every single team that they've faced. Now in front of that kind of back three, we have this two of Rodri and John Stones who have brought real control to the side. They bring physicality and an ability to protect the ball, but also a real technical ability, really good footwork, really good passes of the ball, but also a tactical intelligence as well, when to move the ball forward, when to keep it a bit safer. John Stones and Rodri have been pivotal to this side, sitting as the double pivot in front of the defence, they've been absolutely brilliant. Now, one of the reasons they've been so important is because it has allowed Gundogan and Kevin De Bruyne to push further forward into these two half spaces. And we know how good these two are in these areas. De Bruyne, particularly in this right half space, is absolutely incredible. But also Gundogan, either creating from this area or pushing forward into the box as the extra man. We just know how good they are. We've seen the numbers they have returned this season. But the key, really, is the fact that City now have a box in midfield with De Bruyne, Gundogan, Rodri and Stones. So earlier in the season, they couldn't do this because Haaland couldn't drop into these areas. So Pep changed the shape and he pushed a centre back into this area instead. City now have their four-man midfield. And as a result, they are able to outnumber most teams that they faced. Because most teams play with a midfield three in the Premier League and in the Champions League. So this is where City now start to become dominant. They've also got quality, quality players out wide in Bernardo Silva and Jack Grealish. Two players who are really good at picking the ball up in deep positions, carrying the ball forward and either winning fouls for his side in the case of Jack Grealish or simply progressing the play for their team. It allows City to slowly move the ball up the pitch and get into the final third where they still have that old school Pep Guardiola tactic of creating the front five up against the back four. And of course, to kind of cap it all off, when one of that front five is Erling Haaland, that's a big old plus because you've got creativity from all areas of the pitch. You've got a team squeezing super high so there's creativity everywhere. They've got the overload in midfield, allowing City to take control, but you've then got Bernardo Silva, De Bruyne, Gundogan, Grealish creating chances for Haaland, with John Stones also occasionally getting forward, as well as Rodri. Haaland has had so much supply, so much balls coming into the box for him to attack. Now, he's obviously broke every record there is in terms of goals this season, and I think next season he'll kick on further, because I actually think there have been spells where his movement hasn't actually been quite up to scratch this season. So when he improves that next season, all my days we could see a ridiculous figure from him. So before we continue into the video, a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, jerseyfifa.com, the home of all of the greatest football kits. Whether that be the new latest releases or the old classic ones like this, Jersey FIFA has something for everyone and now you can check it out yourself using the link in the description down below. And also make sure to use code JERSEYFIFA for 10% off when you order. Now this new shape from Pep Guardiola has led to real control from Manchester City. They control possession against pretty much every single team in Europe and it allows them to really suffocate and pass teams to death. Of course they've also got that added creativity with uh, De Bruyne, Bernardo Silva and Grealish in particular. And then the ridiculous goal scoring of Erling Haaland up front. But that is something which we've always seen from Pep Guardiola's sides. Maybe not in the sense of a true number nine, but we've always seen creativity and goals. But for me, where the real evolution in this team has been, has been in this deeper five players, in Rodri, Stones, Walker, Diaz and Aki, and at times Akanji, of course, as well. This is where we have seen the real evolution, because Manchester City's defensive structure this season has been so, so good, so improved. And it comes from their rest defence. The fact that they build possession in this 3-2-4-1 shape means that they have four players in the middle of the pitch here. Five if you include Haaland as well. So the second that City lose the ball, they have players in areas ready to press literally instantly. If the opposition try and come through the middle of the pitch, there's a wall of four players, a box of four players they've got to get through. If they go wide, then the wingers have done a brilliant job of pressing. Both Bernardo Silva and Grealish have been incredible. And if they do get the ball to the wingers, then you have Walker going uh, over ready to defend and we know about his recovery pace, and then Aki on the other side, who's a really good one versus one defender. And if the opposition try and bypass all of this by going long up to the striker, Diaz has been really good in the air, and then you've got Edison sweeping up behind all of this. So Manchester City's rest defence and counter press has been really good. But it also comes because we've seen different profiles in the team. If you go back to last season, we saw players like Laporte at times, uh, Cancelo, Zinchenko. Players like that have been replaced with the likes of, of Aki, uh, Stones, Diaz at times, Kanji, all really good one versus one physical, physical defenders. I mean, there have been situations when Walker hasn't played, for example, that we've seen literally pretty much five centre backs on the pitch, with Aki, Diaz, Kanji, and Stones, the natural centre backs, but even Rodri has played centre back for Spain. These are five big physical presences, and for me, that is what has ultimately got them over the line. 
We saw it in the FA Cup final, I believe it was John Stones heading the crossbar to try and get the ball away. That's that new mentality which has been put into the team. When City need to, they can put players back in their penalty area and they can defend their box like their life depends on it. That is something which Guardiola sides haven't really had in the past, now they do. So that for me is the big evolution. From Pep Guardiola being this frustrated figure early in the season to this guy who has now gone on to win a historic treble, that's the difference. It is the defence. It is these big players that can win their duels. Before you could kind of hit the channels against City, you could go long and they would be a little bit vulnerable because Laporte isn't actually a great defender. Cancelo, not a great defender. Zinchenko, not a great defender in one versus one situations. These players here, which we've got on screen now, are all either really physical or all really good one versus one defenders. And that is what has aided them massively in the second half of the season. And for me, it is what has made them maybe the most complete team we've ever seen because they have the physical side of the game completely on lock. They've got the technical side on the game completely on lock. Players like John Stones, Rodri, Aki, ridiculously good technicians on the ball. But also further forward, Grealish, Gundogan, De Bruyne, Bernardo Silva, all ridiculous technicians. I mean, from a tactical point of view, they play this ridiculously good shape, which outnumbers the opposition in pretty much every zone of the pitch. And then I've got one of the best goal scorers the world has ever seen. Counter-pressing, they're brilliant, they're all in tune, they're all on the same page, they all do it, they all go together and press super high up the pitch, they suffocate the opposition, they win their duels in the middle of the pitch, and then if they have to defend their box, they can do that as well. That is why for me, this Manchester City side is one of the best teams we have ever seen. Now, I could go even more in depth on this and talk about it even further, but I think plenty of people are going to be covering this Manchester City team, and we've seen a lot of talk about it over the past few months, so I don't want to bore you with all of that. I just want to give kind of my quick views on what Pep Guardiola has done this season and how he has really tactically evolved and it's why he's one of the best managers of all time. There's an argument for the best of all time, I'll leave that to you guys in the comments, but he's certainly right right up there and this City team is right right up there and that's why they won the treble but let me know what you think in the comments down below. Who do you think has been City's most important player this season? I would make an argument for John Stones in the second half of the season, but also players like Ruben Diaz, I mean, De Bruyne is always important, Rodri, Haaland with the goals as well. There's a lot of important players. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Who do you think they should sign in the summer? Maybe, you know, we might see a slight evolution again of the squad. Maybe someone like Mares might leave, Laporte, Gundogan, Bernardo Silva, all players which have been linked away from the club. So who should they bring in? Apart from that though, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. And as always, I will see you in the next one.